back not a study time with KP I'm KP and today we'll be doing some pseudocode practice right um, we know that pseudocode is a, a challenging area for many students so I'll put a little bit more focus here and do some exercises so first we have this statement here where it says you wish to input each mark from four class tests then calculate and print the total mark write the pseudocode using sequential statements so that's the first thing we're going to do so sequential statements as we know the statements are one after the other right there's no branching there's no looping the statements are just going one after the other so we look at it and we say what the key things it's asking for what are the key things they're asking for so you want to input marks from a test four tests so we know we want four tests and we'll be printing the total mark so we'll be adding each we'll be adding all the marks together to get a total mark so the first thing we know that we need to start our algorithm right we need to have a start and we need to have a stop right then we are going to declare our variables. Now, this declaration step is not required by CSEC, but it's a very good practice. So you know what data type are for the, the variables that you'll be using, right? So I'm going to include it in this example. So you're going to declare your variables. Now, we know that we need variables to capture the, the marks. So we'll have... Uh, let me call to be able to capture the, the test marks. So I'm going to have four variables test one, test one, test two, test three, and test four. Right? What other variables? There is another variable that we needed to capture the total marks. So I'm going to include a total, right? And all those variables, we'll declare them as, as a real because real, we know that will allow decimal. As I'm coming in about tests, you know, you can have points. You have 90.5% and so on. All right? Are there any other variables? No, can't see any. Now, what's the next step we're going to take? So, we declare our variables. We need to initialize variables. Now, um, the total variable is a perfect variable to initialize because during the... All right. So, the next step we'll take is that... We start um, accepting the inputs from the user. So we are going to ask the user to print. We're going to print and ask the user to enter the value. So print, enter, marks, mark, for test one. That's the first one. As we ask the user to enter that value, we're going to accept the value in an input variable. Right, and that is going to go in test one. We're going to do this for for the four tests. So I'm going to just copy and paste to make the process um, faster, right? And make my changes. So we have test one, test two, right? Accept the variable in test two. We have test three. Accept the variable in test three, and we have test four accept the variable in test four, right? And just making adjustments so that the, you can see clearly and everything moves, right? After we've accepted all tests, the variable, all the tests for all, the marks for all four tests, we're going to now add them up. So we need to have a total. Total equal to this one plus test two plus test three 
plus test four. All right, and that will give us the total. The next thing is we need to print the total. So we're going to have a print statement. So we're going to output statement. So we're going to print total marks and print the value total. And that would be our sequential uh, pseudocode showing our, our, our instruction using sequential statements. So the statements will be executed one after the other. So I'm just going to make some changes here so you can see the proper one. So there you go. All right. Hi. Okay. So let's move on to the next part B, which is to write that same problem. So that same problem using a while loop. Right. Let's start. So for pseudocode, we must have a start and we must have a stop. Right. Now, what do we know about while loop? We know that for the while loop, you must have a condition, right? Will be the uh, the concept of the loop is that we will be repeating a set of steps a number of times, right? And you must have a condition that tells you when to repeat these steps, right? So for the while loop, we also know what the constructs will be. So for while, we start with a while, we must have a condition, right? While, condition, do, and then you end while, right? Now let's look at the problem again. We know that we're capturing the mark for four class tests. So we need the loop to repeat four times. We're capturing the test. So each time you each pass, you go through, you'll be capturing a test. So you only need a variable to capture the test. So we're going to declare a variable called test. We also need a variable to capture the total mark. So for each mark we capture, or each test value we capture, we're going to add each of those together each time in the loop. So we get a total. So we have a total variable. And because it's possible to have decimal, we want that variable data type would be real. We also need a counter. We need something that will be counting so you know when to stop, right? You'll be counting in this example of the while because you know it's four class tests that you're capturing. So you need to repeat the steps four times. So we'll be capturing a total and I will be declaring that as a, calling that variable count and declaring that as an integer. Integer, why? Because an integer, are, integers are whole numbers, right? We're counting one, two, three, four, right? I will now be doing some initialization. What is the starting value of, of some of these variables? So count will need a starting value. So I'll be starting count at one, and we also need to initialize total because we will be accumulating this value. Each time we capture the mark for a test, we'll be adding it to total, adding, adding until we get to four, four test scores that we've captured. So I'll be starting at zero. Now we're going to while condition now. For the condition while, remember we said that we're capturing four class tests. We need four. So we'll be counting one, two, three, four. Right? So we count. And we're going up to four. We need to use a relational operator now to make a comparison to determine how this loop condition should work. Because we're going from one to four, when it gets to five, we know we need to stop. So as long as the counter is less than an, or equal to four, we want the loop to continue. When it gets to five, we stop. That's the idea. So what will be repeating? So similar to the sequential statement, just to make it a little bit easier, I am just going to copy and paste and edit, right? 
So we'll be, we print, enter mark for test, right? And we'll be capturing that value in the variable test, just like we have it here. Once we do that, we now need to do a total. So we total, and remember to indent. When you indent your code, it's more readable. You can understand where each statement fall. Right? That's another good quality of um, a pseudocode. So this total value will be adding test to total. Each iteration, each loop, each pass in the loop will be adding the test value to it to get a total. And the next statement inside the loop is the counter. So that we don't have an endless loop situation. We want to be incrementing the count each time. Right? Incrementing mean you're adding one, right? Or you're incrementing it. You're adding one, you're making the counter move with each pass. So count equal to count plus one. All right. What else? It says where we should be printing the total mark. So after the loop has been completed, we need to print. We need to print what the total is going to be. So total marks and the value total. That's it. So what we'll do is verify. Let us verify if this is doing what it's supposed to do, right? We start the count at one and we want four numbers. So one, it goes over one, right? The count goes to, sorry. So one, when it's one, we're gonna print, we print the test score, we have the total, and the count goes to two, All right? Is two less than or equal to four? Yes, then we print again, All right? Print, get the, the test value, add it to the total, count goes to three. Is three less than or equal to four? Yes. Then we continue again. Repeat these steps. Count goes to four. Test in the loop again. Is four less than or equal to four? Yes. We go again. Print, 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 get the input, add total. And now we'll go back to count. Count add one to count. Five. Count goes to five. When it goes up in the loop, it says, is five less than or equal to four? No. And it will exit. It will exit the loop and print the total. So I hope you see how this part is working. And this is how you test and verify your pseudocode make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do right that's how you know you've solved the problem so let's move on to the next construct where we're going to write this solve this problem using a for loop okay so just like before we always ensure that we start our algorithm and have a stop All right, let me change the color here. So we always have a start and a stop, right? We're going to declare our variables. And a reminder, this is not a required step for your exams. Your voices are very good practice. Declare our variables and it's just like the others. It's will be the data type will be real because Test the, the marks for the test and the total can accept decimals. We'll also have a counter, right? Because it's a loop. So we have a variable that is 
we'll be incrementing each time to manage a loop and we'll call that variable count and that is an integer because we're counting right so the next thing is we'll initialize our variable right and there's a little bit of a difference here right so for the for loop right the construct is for and we're using the variable count right we're starting it at one and we're going to four because there are four tests two and four right now right here we have the count equal one to four that is acting as an initialization where we're initializing count to one and we're incrementing it by one each time you go around in the loop that's what this one statement is doing right and it will stop at four so next statement will be printing the user enter mark or test and we accept the input from the user as test we we'll calculate our total and that's the end of the loop next we'll ensure that we print the total marks and along with the variable total that's it for the pseudocode using a for loop so before we end let us ensure that it's doing what we expect it to do right so count here starts at one right when it's one you print enter marks let me correct that spelling it should be mark all right enter mark so you print enter mark for test input the test add the, to the total then you go again up in the loop count becomes two right and it is less than four so we're gonna continue enter input add the total back to the top of the loop count becomes three repeat the steps again and we're iterating you the end of the loop count becomes four right it's at four we go through the steps again at the end of the loop and that is it we move no further because count goes from one to four so we would have printed out all four class tests and calculate the total and also print the total so that's it for this section this session today we practiced creating pseudocode using different constructs and remember any questions you have leave them in the comments and i'll see you in the next study time with kp bye